If there's one definitive thing you can say about Karen, they're everywhere. They're on the hot ring tracks, the Nordic dirt trails, the front lines. There's even one parked in your street right now. And you're on the market for a new one. The Karen Sultan is the car for the teenager who thinks the Astrope is a little too pedestrian, but they can't afford an S95. When it comes to how they'll appear to their friends, Karen has left them two options. They can look like they've always got something to prove, or like they've won the World Rally Championship three consecutive times. In that moment, the thousands you scrounge together in exchange for your adolescence are wired into the sweaty palms of a salesperson who just made their commission. That you Sultan sitting in the parking lot is no longer a reflection of your dreams and aspirations, but a monument to the hardships that got you there. Sure, in a couple thousand miles, the dash will light up like a Christmas tree, and you'll need to visit three different Karen specialists to find out what the term sunk cost really means. But the Sultan isn't just a car, it's a culture. The culture in question might reek of mixed berry vape juice, but it's the racing pedigree and people behind that culture which give the Sultan its true meaning. The Sultan has a following from all walks of life. People just like those kids from the high school smoke pit, single moms, moms plural, rally enthusiasts, and rich kids, making the Sultan one of the last true cultural melting pots of this great society. Karen's rally division would have you believe the Sultan was bred purely for the dirt, but the Sultan was designed for the family first. You see, any successful race car worth its salt must also push units. It's not all that complicated to send a blank check to your R&D team in exchange for a cutting-edge vehicle to mop the competition with. All you need to do is cough out a few hundred street legal examples to satisfy the homologation rules. Or in Grotti's case, lie about your numbers. Maintaining a perfect balance between competent race car and profitable consumer vehicle is an art of its own. Even if that meant your core demographic was inspired to drive like maniacs. You've probably seen enough bleeder videos of people who thought their skills behind an Exorbio controller translated to the wheel. But the Sultan is omnipresent on just about every street and highway across the country. The Sultan got its start just about how you'd expect. The early 90s prodigal replacement for Karen's sedan platform. The rectangular 80s were sunsetting and the curvaceous 90s were stepping into the limelight. It wasn't long before the brand new Sultan took the rest of the world by storm, selling like hotcakes across the planet. Its reception in North America challenged displacement stigma. In North America, a rally package for your car never meant a turbocharger, all-wheel drive, or even a stiffer suspension setup. It was just dealership chicanery and a badge to make people feel better about their six-cylinder. For Karen, the opposite was true. The experimental rally package meant that you didn't just have a six-cylinder, it had all the bells and turbo whistles too. Although you'd never know just how much power you had under the hood, as per Karen's gentleman agreement with its peers. It doesn't matter if you're in the angst stages of puberty and fluent in casual recess vulgarity, or deep into your midlife crisis rebound marriage. That impressive hood scoop, handsomely tall wing, twin turbos, and burnt copper five spokes will beckon to you. Almost like it was asking you to wrap it around the pole during the snow nuts. Listening in from the sidelines, you could easily mistake the sedan's throaty growl for a flat four. But lo and behold, the Sultan lineage owes its power to Karen's signature three and a half liter inline six. The sport trim Sultans left the factory complete with braided hoses, twin turbos, and a full strut bar. Just remember to check your oil. You slip up once, and it's all over. All-wheel drive came as standard, so whether you were setting heats for a rally stage or evading the heat in an armed robbery, the Sultan had you covered. For a 30-year-old vehicle, the original Sultan is still a force to be reckoned with. Cornering is still as tight as a hipster's jeans, and the acceleration will push you into your seat, like a roided out flight attendant who's no longer asking you to just sit down. Just don't get overconfident. It's still a sports sedan. The only way you're overtaking a banshee is if the driver isn't careful, and they end up doing the banshee thing. Don't even get me started on the ultra-rare RS edition. You thought the Calico was hard to find? They made five times more Calicos than they did RSs. Unsurprisingly, most examples that left Japan were exclusively sold to rally teams. The rest were domestics exported for exorbitant markups. But let's be honest, a mint condition RS isn't the worst financial decision you can make on a two-door sports car. After all, who wouldn't want to pretend they're a rally driver on the public road space? What's the worst that could happen to one of these priceless machines? But just like any company with success on its hands, Karen couldn't help themselves from changing things for the sake of changing things. The execs at Karen figured the rally look might have scared away potential customers, so they opted for a softer luxury sedan style instead. 
The Sultan was stretched out just a bit further and put on just a few more pounds to compete with the Oracle, Tailgater, and Shafter. For some reason. Rust accumulates in places you never thought possible. Somehow the airbags have already been recalled twice, the Japanese pre-mixed coolant auto-blends into a delicious chocolate smoothie, and the head gaskets leak with a colander. Same 3.5 liter engine, still all-wheel drive, now with an optional endo intercooler. Except Karen got a little overindulgent when it came to the twin turbo badging. Turbos or not, you got the badge. Even though the Sultan had taken up bulking and protein supplements for the mid-sized sedan market, it still had something to offer for those looking for more than just a commuter car experience. A particular trim package which transformed the car from mundane to suspect number one. Complete with a heightened wing, aggressive front intake, and burnt copper five spokes. The Sultan TT, of course. Just like the regular Sultan, the TT didn't get the twin turbo treatment either. But that didn't stop the car from earning a prolific reputation of its own with the Korean mob. But you know what did get those twin turbos? The Sultan RS. You could almost call the regular and the TT Sultan's interior detailed desolate, if it wasn't for the pretend carbon fiber trim around the gauge cluster and the low-slung center console with more meters and buttons than a nuclear power plant. The RS option replaces some of the blandness and comfort of those pleather seats for aftermarket buckets, a cage, and of course quarter panel decals to show others you bought the big boy version. But you're not here for the four-door RS, are you? They're rare. How many were made? No one knows, but legend has it, the number is barely into those double digits. There's 10 to 1 odds that the one at your local meet with a bubblegum princess robot whatever plaster on it is a Benny's reproduction. Who knows what one had to do to get their hands on an RS outside of Japan, besides owning a rally team of course. The ones that sold for motorsport looked a lot closer to the stock celts and with the RS badges added to the grill and trunk lid. But for all its differences of the original RS, it still holds virtually the same level of recognition. Whether it's tearing up a gravel trail or obscured by foliage behind an abandoned mansion in Alderney, the RS is an icon, so if you happen to be graced by one of these rare specimens in public, always remember to look respectfully, or film whatever happens next.